Ron Valdez, Valdez traffic. Yeah. Uh, no, you should be on your radar there. We fetched up uh, on the ground. Evidently, uh, we get some oil. And uh, we're going to be here for a while. 10.8 million gallons of oil spilled. 250,000 birds killed and $2.5 billion in cleanup costs. But there was another, less known consequence of the Exxon Valdez disaster. Leading investors and environmentalists formed a new organization called Ceres. Its goal? Nothing less than to change the way companies do business. Investors and environmentalists came together saying, given the cost to Exxon Mobil, let alone the environment, Companies need to be a little more mindful of integrating oil spills, carbon emissions, water use into their bottom line financials. Ignoring them is going to cost money, and addressing them provides opportunities. We want to integrate sustainability into the financial bottom line of every company and into the thinking of every investor. Ceres works closely with more than 80 of the world's largest companies, helping to steer them towards more sustainable practices. Some of the most important companies produce or distribute something whose cost affects every business's bottom line, electricity. I somehow think about it as the Willie Sutton School of Bank Robbery. Somebody asked Willie Sutton, why do you rob banks? And he said, that's where the money is. We often work with utility companies because 40% of our carbon pollution and huge amounts of the water we use are in the electric utility industry. And if we start looking at how utility companies could do things differently, we could get a real handle on things like climate change, on water shortages, if they take it seriously. Apart from China, no country consumes more electricity than the United States. And in the next quarter century, global demand is expected to leap dramatically. In the US, nowhere are the pressures greater than in fast-growing states like Arizona. But in 1994, the state's biggest power company, APS, became the first utility to accept Ceres' challenge to reduce its environmental impact. That was a little scary. I remember 95 people here were still questioning why we did it. Nobody questions it today. It's clear to us that uh, the world's not going backwards. Businesses are going to have to find a way to be cleaner, smarter, faster, how to reduce their carbon footprint. And let me just say, it's not just a carbon footprint, it's an environmental footprint. So it includes things like being smarter with water. At its Palo Verde nuclear station, for example, APS uses recycled sewage water to cool its reactor. Instead of just using the water once, we actually have found another use for it, and that's the generation of electricity. APS sat down with Ceres and said, we want to know the smartest things we could do to be a sustainable company. Bring together our greatest critics, our investors, and we want to learn from them. This dialogue with Ceres forced us every year to look at these issues. We are now looking at meeting a 50% increase in customer demand by 2025, and our plans right now are to meet that without increasing our carbon footprint at all. And we will do that using renewables and energy efficiency. From our perspective, we feel like we've gotten ahead of the curve. It's allowed us to save a lot of money because it's made us more efficient. So it's been good for the bottom line. What's good for the bottom line is very much on the mind of Tom King, the CEO of National Grid, an international utility that serves customers in New England. Both as a, an industry and as a nation, uh, we're continuing to lose our competitive advantage. You know, think about who are the individuals that are going to have me rethink my business model to ensure that I am going to play at that global competitive advantage. And one of the things that Ceres does is just that. They're a company that wants to lead on energy efficiency, and we help them put in place standards and ideas and metrics for how to do that. After engaging with Ceres in 2010, National Grid made a bold pledge to cut greenhouse gas emissions by 80% by mid-century. They're already nearly halfway there and plan to rely increasingly on renewable resources like wind power. They set very clear benchmarks and made them public. They are tying Tom King's salary to what he accomplishes on climate. Those are all things we've worked with the company on and their leadership acts. Working with utilities, Ceres has developed new guidelines for a low-carbon future. 
but catalyzing change at big corporations is not always easy. You know, at times, right or wrong, companies might dismiss environmental advocates or social advocates as people who don't really understand the business of a company. But they can't dismiss regulatory agencies like the Securities and Exchange Commission. So Ceres worked with investors to push the SEC to make companies change the way they report their risks from climate change. The SEC last year, after six years of prodding, issued new guidance telling companies that formal legal filings have to include risks from climate change. And the reason that's so important is because when companies acknowledge their risk in legal filings, they've got to start doing something about it. Climate change if companies still don't want to do anything, Ceres exerts pressure by working with the people who have the most clout, their major stockholders. People like Denise Napier, the Connecticut state treasurer. She manages $25 billion in state pension funds. It really is all about the fact that there's such a thing as investor power, money talks. From an investor's perspective, what we're concerned about is the future financial health of the companies in which our pension funds are invested and could be directly impacted by climate change. Ceres helped Napier file a shareholder resolution against one of the largest utilities in the U.S., American Electric Power. The action led AEP to acknowledge climate change as a financial issue and set a precedent for the entire industry. Following that success, in 2003, Ceres launched the Investor Network on Climate Risk. It started with 10 members and $600 billion under management. Today, it includes nearly 100 members who control almost $10 trillion in assets. We want to make sure that companies and investors who have huge resources and a huge footprint understand that dealing with these issues is what a 21st century corporation is about. I am so enthusiastic about the future. I do think we're on a cusp of major change. National Grid and other CEOs outside of this industry with Ceres are going to continue to really set the bar and set a direction that's going to be better for future generations. We know that we need the world's leading financial players and corporations and policymakers to be part of the solution. The last 10 years, we've seen more and more business leaders get on board to address these issues, and I'm convinced that the next 10 years will see yet more progress.